So, you want to punch a clone of yourself in the face, but you don't actually own a clone? <laughs> or maybe you do, but you don't want to hit him for real. Well, it is a good thing that you hit this video then, because today we are looking at how to deck yourself in the face, or your clone in the face, without actually hitting him in the face. Starting right now. So this effect is a very simple effect and a very quick tutorial, but I figured I would do one because this is an effect that I use a lot with my TikTok account and it actually does fairly well with that account. <laughs> <laughs> So I figured I'd show you how to get it done. Now, with this effect, you're going to be dealing with two clips for one punch. That is a clip of you getting punched and a clip of you punching. Also, a big note with this is make sure that your camera is set to manual focus, not autofocus, because if it's set to autofocus, uh, you can see in our After Effects right here, like this clip right here, me getting punched. The moment I get out of frame, your autofocus is going to want to focus to the background, which is going to affect uh, it matching with the other clip of you coming in with the punch. So make sure that your camera is set on manual focus. Let's get into this very quick edit. So in After Effects, we have our two clips. Again, me getting punched and me giving the punch right there. You can see I got great glasses on. Now, what we want to do first is, is we want to go to the clip where I'm getting punched and we want to cut out a couple of the frames where I'm getting hit to add impact to the punch. So let's move ahead and see right where I get punched. Right there is where we begin. So let's cut out this frame right here. We can control alt D, then move one frame ahead and cut that frame out, move the clip forward. And now we have more impact to our hit. And we also know exactly where the hit is happening. It's right where this frame is cut. So we can put the current time indicator little needle thing right where it is cut and take our other clip on top where we are giving the punch and scroll through that clip to see right where my fist would be hitting my face, which right there. Now let's create a mask around my arm right there. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it does have to be adequate. And to get a better visual, let's go to the mask, hit M, change from add to none, and then hit the stopwatch on our mask path. Now let's go frame by frame, keyframing our mask with my arm. And again, we can use the page up and page down keys on our keyboard to go frame by frame much easier. Much easier, easily, easily, or easily. -er. And when making this mask, remember the most important parts to uh, get just right is where my arm is crossing my other self uh, falling out of frame. So you can see uh, right here, down in this little section uh, over here, you know, that's where it's important. It doesn't matter really about getting a good mask all over here because that's not where the images are crossing. Knowing that fact will save you time. So when we're done with that, we're left with this wonky arm flying in. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to create another mask. So let's put a lock on our mask that we just created. Let's just lock that down. And let's create a second mask on this layer that's just like a square rectangle situation. And this mask is going to help bring in our entire person as uh, he throws in the punch instead of just having a floating arm there. So let's select M to see our mask path for the mask two that we just made and select the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And now we don't have to go frame by frame with this mask. We can go like every five frames and just slide this line over this mask over as our character getting decked begins to go out of frame. And you can see this mask, what it's doing is it's uh, yeah, bringing me into the frame, like I was saying before, instead of a floating arm. Just make sure we don't have this mask cross me getting punched because now I'm getting clipped out of there. We don't want that. So with that second mask added, we're now left with this right here. So now we wanna go back to that first mask. Let's unlock it. And we just want to select F so we can see the mask feather option. And we wanna put it at a feather such as 35. And for the second mask, let's put it at a feather of 100. And what that does now is smooth out our arm mask that we've created to help with the, uh, so it looks like it has natural motion blur instead of what it was before where it's just a straight edged line. And with the second mask being a feather at 100, we're now cleaning up that mask going over the background because if we were to have it at zero, you can see there's a slight, it's very subtle, slight line being uh, noticed where the color temperature wasn't exactly the same. You could fix that line by color correcting as well, but it's easier just to put a feather at 100 and that line is gone. So now we have this punch effect. Let's select all the three clips, right mouse click. Yeah, yeah. So select all three clips, right mouse click, pre-compose, and then put final punch. And I don't know why 
uh, this right here is selected, this check mark, adjust composition duration for the time span of the selected layers. Uh, sometimes we want that, we don't want this right here. Hit okay. And now we're going to duplicate this layer. Let's go to uh, position, hit P, Let's hold down alt, select the stopwatch tool. That brings up our expressions window. We can type in wiggle and then put 100, 100. And you can see what that does is it gives it a wiggle expression to the position that makes it shake like crazy. So let's turn on our motion blur right here for that layer. And then let's go to the point where I'm getting decked, which is right there. Let's control alt D to cut the front part of the clip off. And then let's go three frames ahead, control alt D and then delete the back end of the clip. So now we're left with just these three frames of the screen shaking like crazy. And what this does is gonna give a lot more impact to the punch as if when I'm decking myself, it's like the camera shaking from pure power. And that's it, that's the tutorial. Short and sweet like I promised. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. And I'm sure if you follow me on TikTok, you'll see this effect being used many, many more times because like I said, those fans, they eat it up, not sure. TikTok's a weird platform, you know? Uh, it's not that it's weird, it's like random stuff works. Can't explain it. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything that I'm uploading regarding After Effects and Premiere Pro tutorials. All in the sphere of indie filmmaking and TikTok content. Two random things, maybe, but we, I think this channel could make it work, possibly. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.